So this was a 79-year-old gentleman who presented to our office with some complaints of numbness and weakness in his left arm. These symptoms were concerning for a, a transient ischemic attack, which can be a precursor to a massive stroke. And discovered that he had a critical 80% uh, stenosis in his right carotid artery. To reduce his long-term risk of stroke, we wanted to offer him a carotid revascularization procedure. The patient has severe home oxygen dependent lung disease. He's had a bypass surgery many years ago. Um, in addition to complaining of his left arm um, symptoms, he was also having a lot of angina recently. And a recent cardiac catheterization had revealed that all of his bypass grafts are now occluded. Because of severe underlying coronary disease, that would also make any surgical interventions very risky for him. So this is just us accessing the artery and advancing a guide wire advancing a longer wire up into the aortic arch, which then allows us to advance our shuttle sheath, which is demonstrated here, over the aortic arch near the brachiocephalic artery, which is the artery that we need to access um, to approach the carotid artery in this case. This image demonstrates us engaging the brachiocephalic artery with our slip cat catheter. Here we're performing an angiogram to confirm the position of our catheter in the brachiocephalic artery. Here we've advanced a wire up the brachiocephalic artery into the right external carotid artery. And then over this wire, we will advance our system, which is demonstrated here, our JB2 catheter being advanced into the right common carotid artery. Here we've advanced our shuttle system over our JB2 catheter into that right common carotid artery. And once we do that, we can remove our JB2 catheter, slip catheter. Here we're carefully advancing um, an, a guide wire through that narrowing in the carotid artery. Here we're advancing a spider distal em embolic protection device delivery catheter over our wire. This is a device which is a small filter and it'll actually capture any plaque debris that might break off from the carotid artery when we're trying to fix it with the balloon and the stent. Here we're releasing the spider distal embolic protection device. Here we're advancing our balloon catheter which is between the two marks which just are climbing up the wire. We're confirming the location of the balloon to be centered around the blockage of concern. Here we're inflating our balloon to pre-dilate that blockage and stretch open that plaque. Here we're withdrawing our balloon catheter. We're advancing our self-expanding stent. These are more flexible. They're made of a material called nitinol, which is a very flexible alloy. Since there's a lot of twisting and turning in our neck area, we need to use these self-expanding stents rather than the standard balloon expandable stents that we would use in the heart. We're actually releasing the self-expanding stent you can see it uh, as we pull back on our catheter, the stent automatically expands up against the wall of the artery. We're post dilating the stented area with the balloon just to make sure that that stent is well expanded everywhere it needs to be. And we take a final angiogram to make sure everything looks good. We're very happy with the final result here. A subtracted angiogram, which makes everything much easier to look at. Here we see an uh, excellent result with our stent procedure. So at the end of the procedure, we always perform a cerebral angiogram. These are the cerebral arteries which feed the brain just to make sure um, no plaque debris has gone upstream and clogged off any of these small arteries. So we just want to make sure, again, that um, basically no plaque has broken off and clogged up any of the small branch arteries up in the brain.